Hi there, this is Jason. Uh, I'm going to explore a couple of options with you here um, regarding what you might like to do with your unit and topic uh, sort of organization and layout. Um, you know, when you start a Moodle course, you, you probably start with a page that looks a bit like this. Uh, in this case, we've put in a header just at the top of the course and then we've got all our um, course content and we've got to decide you know how we're we going to put this together into units or topics into this frame here now there are a couple of well there's lots of different options really um, you sort of need to decide um, what's going to fit best in terms of what it is you want to present and how you want to assess it uh, and what sort of message you want you know, how are you going to address the learner preferences or the learner styles. Now I'll start with an example. Um, this is a course that I've been doing online for the TAE and in this is uh, Open Colleges and the way they've set out their units here is um, for each unit in the course it's basically like its own mini course page and you can see that they um, they have a layout where the, the header just um, identifies the study period and the unit. Um, it's got a forum and a contact for the trainer up at the top in the header. It then has some course materials which link back to the overall course in terms of the overview and a unit forum. Um, we've then got learning materials here, um, a unit guide and a, and a workbook as well as a glossary. Um, the assessments are explained here in their own topic or unit and then there's another unit below that for the um, assessment upload where they'll actually upload their assignments based on what they did here in the assessment materials and then at the end we've got uh, a bank of additional resources um, to help the learners with this overall unit so you know we've got videos here and some powerpoints down the bottom so this is a way of sort of blocking things according to the course requirements, the materials, the assessments, how to actually upload those assessments, and then how to provide uh, a range of uh, supplementary materials. And look, this, this sort of process works well. Um, it's good for sort of showing the learners um, the overall process and what's going to be covered and what you need to do. Um, and basically you're, you're working off collecting the information in big blocks and stages like a, a big workbook. So this workbook is not broken down into subtopics or anything like that. You would need to go in and open up that whole workbook and then work through that workbook. And that's um, that can be pretty good for learners who like to get a big picture, um, who can handle um, working through a volume of work um, and basically working through this process of dealing with the content and the workbooks know it then moving on to what they need to do for assessment and then actually uploading that assessment so that's one way that you can organize um, a page like this these units here could be broken down into five stages the same as this is here so that's one option um, another way of doing it is to actually um, put more in the way of individual tasks or topics in here um, if you're dealing with a unit that um, has a lot of outcomes and elements um, you know it's a, it's a bigger unit a bigger range of things are going to be covered you might like to break it down a lot more so for example in this course here which is a literacy uh, a VCAL literacy unit um, there are actually 20 units sorry I'm in the wrong one this one sorry <laughs> we'll get to that other one in a moment this one's got a collection of 20 quick short units um, you know, and there's not a lot of material in each part, but it's been broken down into 20 topics. Um, and then the, you know, at the top, we do have um, a menu that allows them to click around through this coursework. Um, but each unit has uh, like a skill building thing related to that unit, um, material to be downloaded and worked on, and then an upload for that assessment relevant to that material. So if you've got multiple assessments and multiple strands or topics within the unit it might be better to break it down this way um, to create a progression of short targeted units uh, or topics within the unit or chapters whatever you want to call it 
Um, and then if you use something like this kind of navigation menu here, um, when you click on a unit, it's only going to show that unit. And the learners can actually still navigate around by using this menu, or they can use this menu here. So that's another way of doing it. Um, and then you can untag that to get all the units. Now, the, the, the pros and cons with this approach, I guess, are that um, the learners might look and think, oh my goodness gracious me, you know, there's 20 units here, this is going to take forever. Um, but what they, what I've tended to find is that the learners move through these units pretty quickly, and that can be pretty good for confidence, uh, creating a sense of progression. Whereas if you're looking at a course like this, um, you know, this might look simpler and shorter, but it may not be. That workbook might be huge. Um, these assessments here might be quite big assessments that are entire projects. So, you know, once the learners actually delve into these sections, they could actually be working on each part for quite some time. Whereas with the this approach, they'll actually skim through and see that they've completed things uh, progressively as they go. And this can also uh, be better for the gradebook as well in terms of having multiple items and they can actually you know, see exactly uh, how they're going across the whole course. Um, so, you know, it depends on what works, not only for the content and the, the volume and style of the content, but also how the learners are going to respond to that. Uh, for more dependent learners who need that sense of progression and things to be simplified into blocks, I think this approach is better. Whereas with more independent learners who can handle big chunks of things at a time, um, this might be a better approach. Um, another example of that blocking uh, process is done here. This is even shorter in terms of what's covered because this one is prime, this is an MTech course. This is primarily built around video tutorials that they then need to apply themselves for their assessment. And we've actually broken down all these discrete skills into their own um, topic blocks and then we've got a collection of uh, books, what are called book modules, that gather all those uh, video tutorials into resource chunks. Um, and then we can link to that book here by with these links in each part. But again, you know, it looks like there's a lot there to do. But again, they'll move through those fairly quickly. Um, we, you know, we've got a good navigation option here. You know, all the units are shown and named. Um, so they can skim around the course pretty pretty easily. For example, if I go to Dimension Command, for example, if I click on that, um, that's what's going to turn up once it's finished thinking about it. Um, and that will then, you know, just take us to the unit that we want. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a matter of deciding what works for you, whether you're going to and your learners, is breaking things down into smaller things that are quicker to progress through and quicker to reference through your navigation, um, you know, for discrete skills and, and that sort of thing, um, or whether you want a, a more holistic approach to a whole unit that breaks those units into f specific functions rather than content with the functions built into them. Um, so if you look at an example like this one, this is a course in development with one of our teachers. Um, and what he's doing is he's sort of figuring this out as he goes, and that's the way you should you know, start with Moodle. And he's using specific topics, but he may find, um, once he's completed all the stuff he wants for his course, that breaking it down into five or more uh, little subunits like this might not be exactly what works for him. He may go back to a more general approach like this one, and actually, you know, have an overview, put all these learning materials in one place, his assessments and the uploads and the resources in. in. He may find that that's a better way uh, of actually structuring this. Um, another example is uh, this course here. In this case, I've only got eight topics, or well, nine at the moment, sorry. Um, and again, this is a little bit similar in terms of, in, in this case, it's been broken down into themes, um, thematic units, where um, there's a walkthrough for the unit, there's an outcome, a couple of outcomes listed, a teacher to talk to about that course, as well as the content and the assessments uh, in order, like a flow, like a flowchart of what they need to work through in, in what order. And in this case, this works well as 
in a as a as a design feature as well and again we can have this uh this menu here that allows us to just click our way through the various units and just get that unit um, and we can also use this choose jump to choose my, my option at the bottom to go around the units uh, this is sort of somewhere in between um, say this approach and this approach um, in this case um, we still have that uh, you know, sequence and selection of activities, but we've also you know organised them thematically. Um, so it's a little bit in between. So again, it it sort of we these learners can work a little bit more independently, can handle a little bit more contact uh, content and assessment, but we still see the benefit of breaking things down into thematic topics. So there's a couple of uh, instructional design sort of considerations for you to think about uh, in terms of how you use uh, these units or these topics within a course. Um, you know, see what works for you and the content and the learners and don't be afraid to experiment.